What's up, everybody? Josh here. Um, my legs crossed. Uh, enjoying um, company with Luke H. Uh, just kind of hanging out. And I'm so excited that you guys are here with us uh, at small groups, whether you're at the Nalls, the Noblets, the Kellers, or at Oak Bridge. Uh, just thank you so much for joining us as we are going to continue our conversation on Jesus and social media. And before we dive in, got a couple announcements for you. Next week is Good Friday at the Edge. In other words, you don't want to miss it, okay? Like it's going to be a great time and it's going to start out kind of somber in, in the service. It's going to be a time where we contemplate what Jesus did for us on the cross. It's going to be, it's going to be a time where we really think think and reflect and remember what Jesus did, but it's not just going to be contemplation. Eventually, it's going to lead us to celebration as, as, as we think about what the cross means for our lives. And, and that celebration is going to lead all the way up until after the edge where we're going to have an after party, free pizza again, bring all your friends. We would, we would love to see you guys there. And then the next week, April 14th, is Easter at the Edge, and we're actually celebrating the resurrection together at Oak Bridge City. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Volleyball in the gym afterwards. Um, it's gonna be great. There's gonna be some carpooling options from Oak Bridge Arnold with leaders and with parents who are willing and available to do that. And so, yeah, just be ready for those nights and invite people to those nights and pack those nights out. And honestly, those of you that are here at small groups, like like we're trusting that you guys are gonna lead the way in inviting people to the edge and making these events really big. And we're gonna do our best to to make them awesome and make them fun and make them make them something that you would want to want to be at. Okay. With all that said, how many of you guys were with us last week at the edge? Okay, yeah, yeah. We talked about again, Jesus and social media, and, and really the whole purpose of it was just to get us thinking, just to get us thinking about a couple things. And mainly, like we started out by saying, how much time do you spend on it? In fact, we were challenged, hey, don't spend so much time on it. The average teen in the United States of America spends nine hours a day on digital media, Netflix, video games, social media, like that's a lot of hours. And that leads to busyness and angst and stress and fear of missing out and all these different things. Like it's a big, big deal. And we haven't been dealing with it long enough to know a ton, but I know that there are many, many negative consequences to being on media so much. It's dangerous. I think there's a direct correlation to the dysfunction in our brains and in our world and, and social media. It's, it's dangerous. And so don't spend so much time on it. And on top of the fact that it's dangerous it, it, in, in like, you know, just like our own mind and different things that can go on and stress and angst and busyness, it impacts our relationship with Jesus. It, it really does. It leaves no time to actually spend time with the person who means the most to us. Like it, it, we need to focus on Christ. And then we talked about how, how we shouldn't compare ourselves to one another. Social media is a comparison trap. It is, it's a comparison trap. And we said that, hey, it, it, like you gotta fight that. Don't compete against one another. Don't find your worth in it. Understand that your worth doesn't come from how many likes you got on a picture, but it comes from how loved you are by God. And uh, and that's what we chatted about. Hopefully that was helpful to you. And today we aren't gonna talk about things that we shouldn't do. Today we're gonna talk about things that we should do in regards to social media. We're gonna ask some questions in groups about last week, but also we're gonna talk about some things that we should do as well. And the first is, the first is, is this, make a plan. Like make a plan. This is so important. I'm not much of a planner. Raise your hand if you would say that you are a planner. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I am not, okay? Raise your hand if like when you go to a restaurant, beforehand you'll get online, look at the menu and already know what you're gonna order when you get there. How many of you guys do that? Okay, yeah, you're weird. You're like my wife, okay? She does that. And almost every time we're at a restaurant, she thinks it's cute. She always says this type of stuff. She flirts and she's like, mm, dang boy, you look fine. I wish you were on that menu. I wish I could get a piece of you for dinner. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I'll, you can save me for dessert. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That exchange has literally never happened. And uh, I have no idea why I said it. That's not in my, it's not in my notes, actually. Um, she really always does ask me. She'll be like, Josh, 
what are you gonna order? And I'm just not much of a planner. And most of the time, I'm like, I don't know. She's like, what do you mean? Like, the waiter's about to come and ask us, what, what are you gonna order? I'm like, I'm just gonna wing it. I have like three or four things in mind. I'm just gonna, just gonna wing it. And, and generally I do, and it'll work out for me at a restaurant most of the time. But just winging it doesn't work when it comes to the important things in life that we talk about here at The Edge. We talked about that a lot in our Love, Sex, and Dating series. You can't just wing it. Like you have to have a plan. Without a vision, the proverb writer says, that the people perish. In other words, if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a vision for the future and what you're gonna do with certain things in your life, disaster is on the way. And so when it comes to social media, like honestly, if nothing else tonight, if you just sat down with your small groups and made a plan for what you're gonna do on social media, that would be enough. Like here's the reality. You should know exactly how much time you're gonna spend on digital media every day. You should plan that out. You should put restrictions on your phone and you should know exactly, you should schedule it out. Like when am I gonna be on social media tomorrow? You do that with school, you know when you're gonna be at school. You do that with practice, you know when you're gonna be at practice. You do that with hanging out with your friends, you plan that type of stuff. But with social media, most of the time we're like, eh, we'll see how it goes. Gonna wing it. And when we do that, our natural tendency, we see very clearly based on national averages, is that we just constantly find ourselves going to our pocket and just boop, 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 scrolling, looking at different things. Like you need to make a plan. Otherwise, I'm telling you, disaster is on the way. And I know what some of you are thinking, like it's not disaster, it's fun. It's fun. I like just being able to do what I want to do when I want to do it, not worry about restrictions and all this. Like. Like, I don't want to deny myself of the urges that I have to be on social media. Like, deny, why would I deny myself of those things? Well, that's just the cost of following Jesus. It's true. Jesus, in fact, says that word for it. If you don't deny yourself, take up your cross, and die to yourself daily, he says, you cannot be my follower. That's what he says. So like your urge to be on social media all the time, that's something that you're gonna have to deny. Nope, I'm not letting you, I'm not letting you, you know, dictate how I'm gonna live my life. Like, no, I'm gonna deny those urges. You need to make a plan. Next, this is important. You need to be humble. You, you, you do. You, you need to be humble. This is, this is so huge. This is so, this is so important. I think my biggest annoyance with social media and it's not, at times maybe I am, I, I don't mean to be judgmental. I was gonna say I'm not judgmental. There are times where all of us I think can be judgmental, but there are times where I'm like, that just seems, and it's like, it's, I, I'm, not, I'm not immune from this, but like it just seems like how we do social media, and like what social media is, and how we try and engage the world through social media is that we're just shouting to everybody, look at me. Look at me. Look at this picture. Look at this outfit. For some of us, look at my body. For some of us, look at this vacation. For some of us, look at the, our house. For some of us, look at my accomplishments. Look at my accolades. But we might as well just shout to the world, I'm so awesome. Look how awesome I am. And, and, and if you know anything about Jesus, if you know anything about Jesus and the way that Jesus calls us to live our lives, you know that that's probably that's probably not the way we're supposed to approach social media. Like, like it, 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 it's just true. There should be humility. And, and the reason is, is like as a Jesus follower, we're gonna talk more about this in a second, but our message to the world isn't look at me, it's look at him. It's not look at me, it's look at him. And being humble, it's not thinking less of yourself. It's just thinking of yourself less. It's not making you the focal point of your own world. And so you need to be, you need to be careful not to become arrogant. And I'm not saying that you can't ever post. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's arrogant to post. I'm just saying that as you post, you should think about the heart behind why you're posting what you're posting. If you're posting it to let everybody know how awesome you are, just maybe don't click the button that sends it out there for the world to see. Like make sure that your heart behind it is, is in the right place and really only you can determine that but humility is is huge I, I, I scripture talks a lot about it like like the i think james says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble 
Jesus says that if you exalt yourselves, if you shout to the world, I'm so amazing, I'm putting myself on a pedestal, you're gonna be humbled, you're gonna be brought low. But if you humble yourself before the Lord, you will be exalted. And so make sure that humility is at the forefront of your social media world. And lastly, use it for good. Use it for good, or in other words, own it. The problem with social media essentially is that we're owned by it. So many of us are just slaves to our social media. It's true, like social media runs our world. We are owned by social media. Like, like it, it, it dictates what we do, it dictates what we think about. Like honestly, so many of us are addicted and we just can't stop. And tonight I wanna like pray over this, honestly, that addictions can be broken in the name of Jesus when it comes to social media to the point where we can shout to social media tonight, where we can shout at our phones, even if it seems weird, hey, I'm gonna own you. I'm gonna use you. You are not going to own me anymore. And so think about, like honestly, like I, social media is not evil. Social media can be an absolutely great thing. How are you gonna use it? How are you gonna use it? Because again, like sharing your life with the world, letting people, you know, like building friendships and staying connected, all that's great. But if we aren't intentionally using it for good, then essentially it doesn't mean anything. If we're just like here, as Jesus followers, we aren't called to represent ourselves. We are called to represent Jesus. I love what Paul says. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. He says that we are the ones who say this, become friends with God, he's already a friend with you. I love that. And I think representing Jesus and shouting to the world of who Jesus is and how Jesus, how good Jesus is, could be done so effectively on social media if we, if we actually try to use it for good. And so how could you do that? Would it be encouraging somebody? Would it be commenting on pictures? Would it be, would it be you know, sharing Bible verses every now and then? What, what would it be? Would it be posting encouraging kind of notes and, and, and with pictures of your friends on Instagram, letting people know, hey, these are my friendships. I love these people. Like, what is it? How could you let people know that Jesus loves them through how you use social media? So the few things that you guys need to remember that are so important is first, you just don't spend so much time on it. We're gonna chat about that tonight. Don't compare yourself to others. And the three things that we mentioned, you know, just in these past few minutes, again, make a plan, make a plan, be intentional, have a vision for your social media world. Uh, next, um, be humble, be humble. Don't, don't shout to the world through social media, look at me. Your social media account should, should essentially scream, look at him. And then, Lastly, use it for good. Use it for good. Don't be owned by it, but own your social media to the point where we're saying, hey, we're going to use you. We're going to use you. We're going to use this for good. And we're going to allow God to make a massive difference through our social media lives. And I think that it could happen, uh, no doubt. So, hey, we're excited to see you again next week. Uh, we hope you have great discussions tonight and invite all your friends for uh for a time of contemplating and celebrating what Jesus did for us on the cross um, at the edge next week. And again, just tell everybody free pizza. We'll see you guys there.